Let's talk to Dr. Stephen Wilkinson, an expert on US-Cuba relations, chair of the International Institute for the Study of Cuba. He joins us from the University of Buckingham here in the UK. Th thanks for joining us. Uh, how serious a threat is this to the authorities there? I think in the short term, not, not a great threat. Um, obviously, the situation is serious enough for people to uh, be... Take, take to the streets um, in the way they have. As far as I know, the numbers of actual people doing this, the demonstrators in, in favor of uh, changing the government, let's say, um, are relatively small. Um, we're talking about um, a few hundred here and there around the country, but it is a, an expression, if you like, of the of the pressure that Cuba has been under and has has come under in very recent days, which has intensified as the new variants of uh, COVID have swept through the population. There has been a massive spike in various places across Cuba of um, variants like the Delta variant, which is causing a great deal of concern. And the the call for vaccines is really that they are anxious about the health consequences of an increasing epidemic in the island. Um, uh, there is a vaccination program underway, but it will take time for it to reach the, the whole population. So what you've heard is people being very anxious about that, I feel. Yeah, I mean, there's always been shortages in Cuba. I was there back in the late 80s, uh, and I remember the people queuing for food and things then now. But, of course, what's happened last year because of the pandemic is that that drop in the economy in terms of tourism revenue, but an 11% cut. I mean, that must be causing real pain. Well, it is. Um, and you have to also take into account the fact that, um, that there was a kind of a, a sweetening time uh, under Obama, which ended abruptly with Trump. So a, m a massive amount of investment went into Cuba to develop tourism for particularly American visitors who were increasingly allowed to go there under Obama. Remember, Obama had his famous normalization policy. And then suddenly, uh, Donald Trump reversed all of that. So you heard in the, in the clip there a, a member of the public saying they've got money to build hotels but not to build houses for us. Well, that's an you know, observation on the street of seeing hotels being built, which were supposed to accommodate a boom in tourism as a consequence in the change of American policy. But actually, under Trump, the policy was made many, many times worse than it, it ever was even before Obama took over. And as a consequence of that, the economy has worsened even more than it would have done, which is why the Cuban government is blaming the Americans for this problem. At a time when we were expecting Biden, who promised during his election campaign, to return to the policies of Obama, hasn't done it. He's sat on his hands for the last six months. And as a consequence, the conditions in Cuba have got a lot worse. And now the government is blaming uh, the Biden administration, in fact, for orchestrating okay. uh, these demonstrations. Right. And you can see the polarization that's taking place in the society now between those who are um, in favour of the government. Dr. Stephen Wilkinson, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to cut across you, but we, we, we are totally out of time. But thank you very much indeed uh, for your uh, insight. Uh, just want to bring you some breaking news. We're just getting out of Afghanistan in the last couple of minutes, and that is that the 